Hey guys, welcome to Portugal and welcome to another BMW concept. This time, not the regular Vision Neue Klasse sedan. Kai, what do we have here? The Vision Neue Klasse X. X. All right. So, of course, I have here with me Kai Langer, head of BMW i Design. So many words today. But so let's start words. with this one, right? So, BMW Vision Neue Klasse X. Before we get into the design, tell me. Proportion-wise, dimension-wise, is this an X3 type of vehicle? It's, as our sedan we showed previously, it's uh, in between because it's okay. showing like the whole variety of uh, estimated X vehicles, right? It's yep. between an X3 and X5. Gotcha. All right, so let's talk about the design because I guess people have seen the front end already. And I do have a question there. Then we can talk about the overall design, but let's start with this one because you know people are going to talk about this one mm -hmm. immediately. You went from this <laughs> to <laughs> this. <laughs> Why? Yeah, because we think it fits. We think yeah. it fits very well. So uh, what you, what we were talking about, uh, I can remember on the on the Neue Klasse sedan that we proposed there, we had our uh, horizontally shaped uh, um, kidney icons, right? And what we find here, what you see here is, uh, especially for our X models, uh, our fidget icons, our kidney icons with a vertical element. And what you see here is like this beautiful, beautiful uh, interpreted uh, kidney piece in the middle. Okay. So explain to me why the difference from the new Vision classes sedan. Like why did you decide to go with this vertical interpretation versus the horizontal one? Just a way to differentiate between classes, products? I mean, they differentiate each other already by size by size and yeah. by height definitely right the more horizontal uh, kidney icons been uh, on our sedans mm -hmm. very dynamic uh, a little lower and we decided that it fits very well and also from requests from from our customers they want to have some sort of like presence in our SAV cars and uh, we believe that these vertical icons work very well for that okay so I know that on the other concept car, you said that some of the iconic BMW design elements are still there, like the headlamps, you know, with the double slanted design. I guess this one gets a little bit more, right? So you're still getting a double slanted, you're getting the kidney grille. So would you say it's even more recognizable as a BMW? And is there anything else that you think people will recognize immediately as being a BMW? I mean, first of all, what we did with this one is also we proved that everything that we uh, talked about and thought about uh, with the Neue Klasse Sedan also works on a different concept, right? Okay. And we talked a lot about, about about the old Neue Klasse back then from the 60s, which was a sedan. So it's kind of like easy to reinterpret that into a future sedan. Uh, but we want to prove and want to show you also that uh, all these ideas work very well with the concept that didn't, didn't exist back then. And uh, yes, of course, we interpret uh, also all our icons, our future icons, uh, loaded with a lot of heritage into our future SAVs, and it works very well, what we believe. So once again, I'm going to reference the other concept. Um, the front end of that one looks a little bit more tame, a little bit more streamlined, simple in many ways. This one kind of takes mm -hmm. the shape of more aggressiveness. What's the reason behind that? Do you call it aggressive? I would say it Dynamic, because this is what we believe, that we can uh, be dynamic without being aggressive, right? Okay. And uh, with the SAV, obviously, you have to build some trust for the, for the concept, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be uh, rough, kind of, uh, in, mm -hmm. a certain, in a certain understanding. You have to be stable. You have to give people the trust that they can go off-road if they want to. And therefore, uh, some of the elements help to do so, and uh, especially also elements that showcase that the car has been kind of like protected by some of the monomaterial pieces down there. Okay, so it's still a vision car. Clear there'll be a production series next year. Anything we should expect to change at the front end? I mean, clearly there are some sensors missing there, a lot of things. What would you think that would you, you would need to go into production? So uh, I've learned today that I can say that my mom wouldn't see a difference. Okay. If you if you can <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can deal with that. Uh, okay. So you so I mean it's pretty close to production. That's kind of what you're it's pretty trying close, to say. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Now as far as the, the elements, the design elements that you see at the front, uh, is there a reduction compared to let's say 
a comparable X3 today. So if you look at the current generation X3, completely different products, but would you feel like there is a reduction in the parts that you have at the front, something that you can deal with as far as sustainability and circularity yeah. and all of that? I mean, that's like, uh, we take it seriously. It's not something that we just uh, communicated and thought would be nice to do so. Mm -hmm. Now that's something that we take uh, really seriously. You don't see any chrome here on the front, first of all, so that's, uh, that's gone. It's what I said, we replace chrome with light. That makes total sense for us because mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's really something to deal with sustainability, where we really go uh, into the details. And then, of course, the, the reduction of parts. I mean, we, uh, we really, really strongly consider the design is how many parts do we really need? C yeah. c can we make it out of that one part and still being premium and our customer is not missing anything and still make it really nice? So that's something we take very seriously on this car. All right. So let's talk proportions, design as well, because I mean, at a first glance, I know you didn't ask me, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, it just looks like a combination of an X3 with an X2 a little bit in it, a little bit of an X5. Am I on the right track? Or especially the rear end, I'm talking more about the rear end. Like, how would you describe it, you know, as far as fitting within the portfolio? I mean, it's a, it's a clear two box that we find on, mm -hmm. uh, on our X cars. Um, of course, like also coming back to the sustainability point of view, uh, we have to be efficient. There's also, we have to be uh, aerodynamically efficient. And that you can see on that car. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really something that, that is uh, more in the flow of aerodynamics, way more efficient, therefore. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it's also it sits all over a little lower than uh, than you might know from from a SUV. But that's mostly because of the battery pack and the new new class A platform. No, it is because also like aerodynamic uh, okay. efficiency. So okay. it makes total sense to reduce the um, the overall um, uh, surface from the front. Of course, we have a little bit more flow from from that direction. But nevertheless, want to just show that trust that people could bring in in the rigidness. And uh, and that you could robustness, go yeah. robustness. Yeah. Exactly, that's uh, even a better word. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to shapes, I mean, there there are quite a few lines running across, and we've talked about this in the past. Yeah. I always yeah. Yeah. love creases, honestly, and I see quite a few of them. But I'm going to tell you one that I haven't seen before, or maybe I just don't remember. I've never seen this crease that kind of cuts across the door coming from the fender. Is that something that you've done before, or this is something completely new? And what's th what's the purpose of it? I mean, uh, this kind of idea to have that overall um, impression over the wheelhouse, uh, you will find also on an iX. So, uh, but we use it to, to emphasize uh, the wheels, so it sits good on the wheels and okay. all four wheels. Uh, and it's and more we do that indentation, right? I mean, basically in here, or it's it's yeah, it's a it's, bit, it's yeah. very well, slightly sculpted so out, it's concave. And you know, and, and therefore you don't miss any any spats or add-on yeah. parts that you uh, normally would find on, on, on other SUVs. Gotcha. And then you have another, you know, line kind of s builds up here and goes all the way into the back, just sh lifts up a little bit, right? Yeah. It's not you a straight you line. You know that line. You know that line. You found it on the on the Neue Klasse I sedan as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the same uh, one, right? Yeah, yeah that's, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, kind of like the same one. And uh, again, like on the sedan, it, uh, it divides the overall volume mm. of the car in the body side and then brings the, the overall volume a little bit more down. So you have the focal point a little bit more down. Uh, and then you cut out very well on the rocker side and have this protective area here. Mm -hmm. So that makes, uh, again, the car more lightweight, give it a little bit of a lift. No more Ziegler line. Such an iconic element. You have this line running across, it usually goes into the shoulder. I see the, I see the shape here change a little bit, which gives that nice shadowy component. But what's the reason why you decide to go with such a clean shape there versus what you've had in the past? I mean, we wanted to, to really bring also the um, the design language down to the very assets of BMW. And okay. uh, if you say sicker line, a sicker line, that Zico was something yeah. that uh, that got developed out of like the, uh, a very clean line that was also it's going right around in the first Neue Klasse yeah, back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So this is something that would reference uh, down here it's on this good. line. Th what we also like is is that kind of clean sculpture. You mm -hmm. know, it's like you don't need another line to, to separate volumes from each mm -hmm. other. So what we find here is like very much a sculpture that comes from the top views, you know, yeah. it's like a fender that's growing out of the uh, out of the body side, like very slowly, and then generating basically a surface 
that could catch the light and give you the impression then from the, the side. Let's talk about this because the last time we were playing a joke on the, uh, on on the door handle. The door handle. So now you finally have a door handle. So someone paid for the door handle. To be on so the some car. this time somebody someone paid for the door. Someone to give some money to put a door yeah. handle on it. All right. So just a normal door handle basically, and you it's just it's a normal door handle. So you just try. So is it open? There is I don't a little know if the bit car of is open. Oh, so there is a little bit of a of a switch here basically, and then okay, yeah, it's open. You simply. Open the door like you would open the door. Gotcha. So what can you tell me about the, the ambient light here? It's supposed to be a visual indication of certain things? Uh, this light for, 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 for us now like works as a safety, safety topic. Okay. I mean, you can directly indicate it car is locked or not locked or going to get unlocked. Uh, you, you could even to. go that way okay. if, you, if you want to. And on the other side, if you have a door open, it could also flash in red so that everybody knows that, uh, that, the, car, that the door is open and it's been visible by night. Is this feasible for, pr for a production or is it still a very futuristic feature? I wouldn't say that it's very futuristic. Okay. Uh, so something it's a very well working door handle, I have to say. No soft clothes. Okay. It's a show car. Anybody see that? No. <laughs> So let's talk about the rear end, because honestly, the first time that I saw the car today, I was impressed by the rear end and especially by the side view. So side view, rear end are my favorites. The front end, it's one of those things, once again, might take some time to get used to it. Maybe it looks better on the production series with the kidney grill there. I definitely like it more than the bigger grill, so we'll just put it that way. But the rear end, I felt like it was perfect. I mean, the shapes are clean. It's just beautiful. I love the sloping roof line. I mean, I don't know. So you tell me what you've done here because I like it. Here you, you just mentioned it all. And you can soon <laughs> have my I job though. Your job uh, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's okay. So first of all, what, you, what you've seen or what you've discovered probably first is the stand. Yeah. The, the car has a very, uh, a very good stance without being like too overly bully style yeah. aggressive or something like that. It's, it's uh, pretty confident, I would mm. say. Uh, and you just mentioned it, the, the rear is clean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but nevertheless, we, we did our tricks with uh, cutting it the right way with like these few uh, pieces that we find in the in the rear like, to make it lightweight. Mm -hmm. You again find like a diffuser area that yeah. uh, where you don't have to fear that uh, something gets broken and stuff yeah. like that. You find again like also the safety uh, um, materials there mm -hmm. to to prevent the car from from getting scratched. All these little ideas and the overall proportion make it make it all lightweight and help to maintain that mm -hmm. that good stance on the car. And you just mentioned it is like slope, roof line, and 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 rear end o obviously helps a lot for aerodynamic reasons and yeah. uh, something we we like to 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 take and play with it. Yeah, I mean you're you're also playing really nicely with. Uh, with the fenders coming through because you can see it kind of wrapping around. Right That's there. nice, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. really nice touch, especially on this slide. You can see the, the shadows on it, so it looks fantastic. Uh, and I'm assuming you continue the same theme from the front, from the hood, where you have the indentation in the hood. That's kind of the same theme that goes all the way to the back. I mean, that's also something is like to repeat what you already did and not come up with every time a new thing makes it more clear and more easy to understand. You know, it's like if we talk about reduction and bold statement and monolithic, uh, then you don't come up with each and every time a new design theme and now we do this and now we yeah. do circuits and whatsoever. So you keep what you have and try to use it all over the place. It uh, worked very well, I have to say, on that rear end. What do you think was the most challenging um, design aspect of the rear end for you to achieve or to accomplish? I mean, more from an engineering perspective, because I'm assuming that's something that always drives design as well. I mean, of course, uh, uh, challenging is to, to make all the requirements into, into one cohesive looking, uh, looking picture. Okay. And especially when you have like, again, I have to say, that's always the thing. If you have some crash requirements that, uh, that tell you that you have to do like a, a distance of like that much in the car and mm -hmm. in order to, to pass the test and stuff like that is uh, the most challenging thing to get like one clean surface uh, out of it at the end. And the gaps are not too bad. The gaps are not too they're bad, not right? Too bad, you know, yeah, like yeah. They're not too bad. Seem better, but they're not too bad. Honestly, I've seen worse. On I still have to tell you, it's, it's still a show car. Still a show car, yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. How, how are we going to open this one? Somewhere here, probably? Somewhere Normal, here? Normally, you Normal would open there, it yeah. down, down, down here. Yeah, that's gotcha. right. All right, perfect. Let's go take a quick look inside, maybe talk about the design there and the material used, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. So we're inside the car, Kai, right now, and clearly has similar vibes as the Neue Klasse sedan. 
and I guess that's by design. But maybe tell me if there are any differences or major differences. So um, something that you might feel that this car is uh, more on the inclusive side, let's say more the family side, right? It's uh, if you see in the back, you have like a complete rear bench though, and you have these very nice pillows there. So that makes it more comfortable for more people, right? And also when you when you see our seats here, you know, it's like the, the, the very comfy material up there, of course. Yeah, and it's also a, a it's textile also that's textile. Uh, that's actually really, really nice because I really like it for yeah. its uh, a graphic uh, um, um, precision that you can find here, but being still super soft. Yeah. And you can and you can see that it's almost like inviting and hugging you, right? So everything is like coming from the yeah. side and, and giving you some sort of like, it's a little bit cheesy, but, but giving you some sort of comfy hug right yes, for some reason it just feels cozy and i guess it's the combination of this orange because if you look at some really old movies from the 70s and 80s a lot of the movie sets were really done in materials like this you, you see couches and things like that and it's got that familiarity of like coziness you know and that's what you reminded me the first time that i actually saw it in like an older movie set that feels cozy basically and um yeah, I mean, looks looks great. But tell me, tell me about the design, right? So you have this cocoon kind of design in here. Is this something that's gonna go into production, or is still more for a show car? As I just said, I mean, you won't see so much of a difference for okay. the for the rear car. Then, and also on the interior, everything that we uh, try to achieve on the interior is the same on the interior. I mean, we want to be inclusive. We want to give you the cozy feel that mm -hmm. you obviously have. And that comes a lot from that uh, wrap around here that kind of like includes you. But on the other side, you get like a low belt line where you got a lot of uh, light inside. So you don't feel excluded from what's happening outside. Right. So um, it's that the, the right balance of giving you some uh, safety, you know, because you're still in a moving product, you yeah. can go quick, but uh, having all the information from the outside that you that you want and you're not excluded and uh, with these small amount of parts we also reduce the amount of parts in the interior we spend a lot of emphasis on the on the materials itself so that you have like different tactile uh, um, impressions mm -hmm. on on the car so that it's like very emotional got it now i gotta ask about the floating um, center console here i would say that i prefer without it especially like in the ix because it's, it gives you additional room there it just feels a little bit more roomier for your legs and all of that is this something that's just for the concept to kind of showcase things or production could look different? I mean, to have it like all around, like uh, uh, hovering above the ground, yeah. that was that's probably something that uh, that we uh, that we used for the vision car here because the, the, the space that we have will always be cleverly used in, okay. in, in our products. But the overall shape, it's uh, it's there. <laughs> okay. Can't yeah. wait to but see you can expect one. it then with yeah. a lot more functionality. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, it just makes sense yeah. because once you don't have that transmission, you have so much space here, yeah. you'll be ashamed not to be able to have usable storage or space yeah. or whatever because that's one thing as a sign-off that I find it weird with the iX. Sometimes you do have the floating thing, but then to reach things, you got to go underneath. So it's always a little bit complicated yeah. as far as ergonomics, but that's a different story. The, the idea with this car here and then the vision is that you can take this par out of the, uh, part out of the car and use it as a, as a boom box, ah, you know, as a Bluetooth okay. box. So this one actually comes off. Yeah, it comes off and you can, take, uh, cool. you, you, can, you can take it off. That's awesome. Okay, that's a cool idea. All right, so clearly steering wheel, we designed all of it. We've learned about this. You're going to control screen here, and left the side, and the panoramic one. display. And that's actually closer to production than what I've seen before, because before it was more of just like a quick demo, but now it looks like it's finally refined. And um, it's encouraging to see that the field of vision is quite good, actually. So it's not annoying. I was always concerned that maybe it's a little bit too high. Mm -hmm. and then you're going to be distracted by all the information there but once again tell me about this new steering wheel. i mean we've seen it now in the i5 and you know the new 4 series facelift and m4 what's the reason for going more with a you know flat bottom and now with an you know, all flat top as well i mean first of all what you can see here with this uh, steering wheel and the iterations before you know we've we've went some stages now with the with all the show cars it's uh, if you if you really touch it it's uh, ergonomically very well designed and it shows more of the functionality of our new iDrive so you have the right hand spoke there that is corresponding with our central display and of as you just said with our uh, panoramic vision display um, 
What you might see first is like that we will have a 12 and a six o'clock spoke there. Yeah, that one throws me off a little bit because I just want to kind of twist the <laughs> Because you're not right used position, to it, right? You know? But then I saw the BMW logo, so I'm like, all right, like, I okay, guess it's in the right place. You, you, know? uh, you are straight. in the right place. <laughs> so what you see here is like uh, the possibility that you can do this because you don't have to look through the, the steering wheel anymore to see any of the yeah. display mm -hmm. just behind the wheel. Understood. Cool. All right. So maybe we hop outside and we wrap it up because this was quite informally. But let me see how I op how do I open the door with the ah look at this. Oh wow! I gotta film that actually. That's pretty cool. All right, Kai. Well, thank you so much once again for the very detailed explanation on the car. I appreciate all the insight. Uh, I know sometimes I ask too many questions, but I feel like a lot of people want to know all these details. But uh, I guess when the production car comes next year, we can revisit this and then maybe we can compare it to this one and say, hey, let's see, let's see what's changed. But um, once again, thanks for having me and uh, we'll see you very soon. See you soon. Always my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. And here's what happens, guys, when you stay in concept car, you got to bring your own towel from home. So I'm going to take this one home now and I'm going to use it for the next concept car. <laughs> it actually feels, feels great. <laughs>